Okay, hi everyone. This is um, a painting I started. This is an oil painting of uh, four zebras. I know it looks like three, but if you look right here, there's a big butt of one right there. We just don't see its face. It's because it's a little covered, but it is a base oil painting, and that's how I like to start my paintings. I put them then into Photoshop and touch them up and add things to them. Um, so that's that layer right there. I have other layers here. I have um, some layers of swipe for eyes that I took and put them on new layers so I can look at them. And then I have, if you look carefully, eyes of the middle, two middle uh, zebras. They're not done yet, but I'll zoom in a little bit more closely to, to them for you. And that was the painting that I made, just as a base painting. And here are examples of me painting over them on a new layer in Photoshop. Not done yet. Obviously, it's too cartoony, still very cartoonish looking. But you could see like over here where I, um, on the left, highlighted some of the underlid and where the light hits the eyes. Now, when you're painting animal eyes, it's really important to remember that typically it's darker on the top. Let's say I'll show you here. I'll give myself a new layer. It's always good to work on a new layer. It's typically darker up here and lighter down there because light actually goes through the eye almost like a marble and light comes out here usually in eyes most eyes particularly animal eyes that's what you're going to see so really pay attention to that when you're painting what I'm going to do is show you the, um, the swipe that I have on these open layers here and I'm going to move over to this one on the right which I haven't done yet and I found this example looked pretty good in terms of the facial structure and very similar to the how the eyes were formed. And I'm just going to work on this eye, the one on the right, for now. So I'm going to get my color palette out, and I'm working in Photoshop. And I want to start at the bottom of the eye, and it's going to be this really light honey type of color. And I'm going to go to my brush, and I'm going to come up here. Now, there are a thousand brushes to choose from in Photoshop. You could download free ones. You really don't need that many. People think the trick is the brush. It's really how you apply the brush. So I made one. You can go online for tutorials on how to make brushes, and that's kind of what it looks like when it comes out. Um, you can also go to your brush settings and change. I have a texture applied. This texture is somewhat like a graphite texture, so if it was off, it would look like that. And with the texture, it looks like this. Now, it's a subtle difference, but if I zoom in, you'll see that the right one has texture on it, the left one doesn't. So, I like having the texture on it. It breaks it up a little bit. It looks, it makes it look less cartoonish and less manga style, because that's not the style that I want the finished painting to look in. So, I'm on my eyes. Uh, layer, which is really important. You always want to make sure you're on the right layer when you're working. I locked the zebra layer so I don't accidentally paint on it. I want to keep that pure, so always lock it. And you lock it just by clicking on the layer and clicking this little lock up here. You can toggle it off or on. So when you have that lock, that means you can't do anything to that layer by accident in particular. So I'm on my eyes layer. I've picked my light color. I have the brush that I like. I'm bringing the opacity and the flow down because I don't want it to be too intense. If the opacity and the flow was high, it would be this really thick, heavy color, which I do not want. So I want to bring the opacity down and the flow down and make it nice and light. And what I'm doing is I am, let's see if I can get in here. I'm looking at, this the one? That's the one. I'm looking at this top one here. There, so I'm looking at that eye. I am back on my eyes layer. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And I'm going to go with some really dark brown. And one of the mistakes people make when they're painting is they use very saturated colors. They think, oh, it's brown, so I have to use this obnoxious loud brown. Most often in nature, if you look very carefully, it's really shades of gray. It's tinged with color, but the colors are very muted. And as soon as you start to mute and dull your colors, you will start to see that your paintings become much more realistic. So really think about the shade of the color you're using, how intense the, um, the color is. You don't really need it to be that intense. I'm going to pop around here. Up here it tends to get a little bit lighter in there. 
and I'm going to go in a circular formation like that. Take a little bit more intense, come down here, a little bit darker, and it's going to be really dark. I'm going to make my brush smaller. So I'm going to get in there. And you'll notice there's more of a little bit of a triangle in there, so that shapes a little bit off. Double checking that I'm on the correct layer, because trust me, you can very quickly click on the wrong layer and be painting for 20 minutes, and then you'll realize you have to undo a bunch of stuff. It's not fun. I'm going to bring this gray color down. All zebras are different, so I wouldn't get too crazy about the shape of it. But you'll see that where the light hits it, it starts to get lighter here. So I'm going to come in and very subtly, very lightly, put in a little bit of light hitting. I'm going to come back up here, make this a little bit darker. I don't want it to have a really fine edge, just because again, it's going to look cartoonish. I'm then going to make this even a little bit brighter down here. It's really do that. And I'm going to, now I'm going to change my brush. I want it to be a soft, fluffy brush. I'm going to bring the opacity down and I'm going to make it white because I want to put a little bit of the highlight in. And I'm going to make it kind of big. Oh, I have that texture on it. I don't want that texture. So I'm going to come here, undo the texture. And now it's rather soft. And I'm going to make the brush really small and make more of a of a highlight there. Very soft, very subtle. Always zoom out and look at it. That looks much more realistic. Zoom it back in. It looks like it's popping out of the head a little bit. I do need to work on that. But notice I haven't done any of the skin or muscles around the eye yet. That's next. But I'm just working on the eye, always thinking in terms of shapes. It's a circular shape. It's three-dimensional. It's kind of sitting in the eye socket. That's why it gets a little bit darker in here and then a little bit lighter for the eyelid, and then a little bit darker again. I do need to bring this color out a bit to show that that, that skin is kind of holding that eye in there. It's not just popping right out of it. I can come up here, and I'm going to bring the opacity up a little bit. I want this to be a little bit heavier. And not crazy about that brush. I'm going to go back down to my chalk. I'm going to come in here. And I want this to look like it's actually covering the eye. If you look carefully over here, it's more of an angle. So I'm going to come down like that. It is covering. Now that might be a mistake, but we, we shall see. I don't like it. It's the beauty of painting in Photoshop. You can always get rid of it. I'm going to come back in here, make this a little bit lighter. It's a little too much. And as it turns away from the light, and ask yourself, as it turns away, it's going to get a little bit darker. So it should be a slightly darker there. I'm going to put my texture back on because it's looking a little too cartoonish right now. I want a little bit of a softer look. And if you look carefully, this eyelid really surpasses where, I'll show you right here. Oh, you can't see it because it's in the wrong layer. Okay, just look over here. This up here, um, right there, that, if I drop down a line, look how much further it is out from the eye. It's a good quarter of an inch. So, if I am back on the eye level, I want to erase what I did before, so I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit delete. Deselect back to the eye. Now I'm back to painting. I want my brush. I'm going to go back and I get my brush. This has to come out much further, but it's the wrong color. So I'm going to pick up some color here and really extend this eyelid, which is really going to help to push that eye back into its socket so it looks more realistic, because that is what, what I am shooting for here. And this is about where I would stop in terms of midway touching up this eye. There are 
it is definitely far from done. There are more things, but that's going to be for the next part of this tutorial. Okay, for this part two of the zebra eye, um, I'm going to work, go back into the eye a little bit. I'm not happy with some, it's a little too light in here, and then we'll get back to the skin. So I'm going to go back to my brown color. Again, I'm working in Photoshop, and I have a brush setting with texture on it. So you do have a little bit of texture on there so it's not so airbrushy. And I'm going to come in really dark brown. I'm going to bring the opacity and the flow down because I don't want it to be that obnoxious. And I'm looking at this um, eye up here on the top left for reference. I'm going to bring my brush a little bit bigger. Remember that that eyelid is creating a cast shadow on the eye, so this should be quite dark in here. I'm going to bring the brush a little bit bigger. You can make the brush bigger or smaller by pressing your right bracket or your left bracket on your keyboard. And when you're working on a Mac, I know that works. You can do that. Put a little bit more color down here. You can definitely see a real pop of this light color. Remember, the light's going through the eye and it's coming out the bottom. That's why if you notice, the very tip bottom of the eye is super light and the top is super dark. I'm going to go back in here. And this is going to be really pretty much black. And this comes in. And this is more of a gray. And the eyelid comes underneath and a little bit lighter just to show the rim of where light's hitting it. And a little bit lighter, just like that. Okay, not too bad. This shape I'm not happy with, but we could work on that later. I'm going to work on the skin. The skin is a little bit uh, trickier. It's got to kind of wrap around the eye. I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. I don't want to get too minutia with this because it can be very annoying. So you, you'll be here forever if you use a tiny little brush. You're better off with a slightly bigger brush. And just try to be a little bit looser with it. And considering this is a very large painting, I have numerous other things going on. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. You'll see that the eyelid comes out, it goes in, and it comes back up. As it kind of creases in here, it does get a little bit darker. And you definitely want to show that. But at the same time, you don't want it to be a little too obnoxious. So I'm going to come in here, lighten that up a little bit. And a little bit darker here. This is just too, this is, this is facing away from the light. It should not be that light. As it turns away, and remember, as things turn away from the light, they really get darker and they lower in chroma. That's the intensity of the color. So the value goes down, which means it gets darker. And the intensity of the color dulls. It gets, leans more towards gray. That's what happens. Okay. A little bit more here. Show a little bit more skin. Now for the eyelashes. I'm going to put the eyelashes on a new layer. Because eyelashes, I have learned the hard way, can be a little tricky. I'm going to lock my eyes so I don't accidentally mess them up. I'm on lashes. And working on a new layer here, I can mess up all I want. All I could do is throw out the layer, and I didn't hurt anything underneath it. So the beauty of Photoshop is working in layers. It really gives you the freedom to take chances and try new things. And like I said, if it doesn't work, it's okay, because you could just throw it out. I'm looking at these really beautiful thick lashes coming in here. And they're sticking out like this. And they're definitely covering part of that eye. And I'm going to take that texture off for now. I'm going to make this really warm. And I'm going to bring up the opacity just a little bit so it's a little bit stronger. Because I want some individual strands. Bring the flow up and the opacity. I'm going to put my eraser because it's coming up a little bit too far. Back to my brush. And that cover 
covers the eye to some extent. And also, while I'm here, a little bit bigger, I'm going to put this a little bit more. Mm. That's all looks good. Definitely don't, I'm, I'm dabbing it because I don't want it to be a little too obnoxious. But always zoom out of your work. When you zoom out, you really see what's going on. Now that looks much better zoomed out. Now compare that to the other eyes of the one in the middle and the one on the left. Obviously they're not done yet. So that's kind of the one, the zebra on the left and in the middle, I'm in the middle of doing. I did one layer, one pass with paint, obviously not done. The zebra on the right, this eye here, I did a lot more work to. And it's looking 3D. Think about the shading. As the crease of the fold goes in in the skin, it gets a little bit darker. It gets lighter where over here where it's where the light's hitting it. And as it turns away from the light, it gets darker again. The eyeball is in the eye, so you want to make it look like it's a, a sphere that's actually in the socket. The light goes through the top. That's why you have that reflection. It comes out the bottom like a marble. That's why it's light down here. It goes into the eye socket here. That's why it's darker. It's lighter here because that's where the bottom eyelid sticks out. Again, it's facing towards the light, so it gets lighter, and then immediately it gets darker because, again, it's facing away from the light. So far from done, but it's definitely looking better.